Hey, Ben. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I pray that you had a blessed and a fantastic day in the presence of the Lord on today. That you're standing firm in faith of Jesus Christ. Truly, God's love is amazing. And I want to welcome you tonight for the Bible class. And I pray that something tonight will be enriching to your spirit and your soul. That will empower you to keep standing on the word of truth. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. We're going to um, open up with a devotion in just a moment. Give me a second here. Get my screen up. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. Hallelujah. Truly, God is amazing. Amen. Glory to God. Praise Him. Amen. All right. <clears throat> well, gracious God, our Father, we thank you for another blessed day that you have created. We thank you for this opportunity, O oh God, to come together once again to share your word. We pray tonight, O oh God, that you would inspire, edify, and build us with our faith to trust you, O oh God. Cleanse us from all the righteousness, saturate us in your anointing, God, empower us by your grace. For truly, God, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad as we ask that you cleanse our minds and our hearts, O oh God. Purify us, O God. Help us to stand fast in the liberty of Christ made us free. Because we realize, Father God, without you, we can do nothing. But you are faithful, God, to your children's cry every time we call your great name. We ask that you, Father, to minister to our hearts tonight as we learn your word. Give us strength and power to overcome the temptation, trials, and tests. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to read a, a devotion tonight as well. Hallelujah. From the book, Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. Amen. I pray this is enriching to you. If you don't have this book, you can find this book. It's by Sarah Young on christianbooks.com. And it's only about $10 on their website, so you can get this book. So I encourage you to get this daily devotional. It's very encouraging and it's, and it's enriching to our spirits and our souls and our minds. Amen. So from the book for today's date, April 11, So this is the day that I have made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Begin the day with an open hands of faith. Re ready to receive all that I am pouring into you. Into this brief portion of your life. Be careful not to complain about anything. Even the weather. Since I am the author of your circumstances. The best way to handle unwanted situations is to thank me for them. This act of faith frees you from the resentment and frees me to work my ways into your situation so that good emerges from it. To find joy in this day, you must live within its boundaries. I knew what I was doing when I divided time into 24-hour segments. I understand human frailty and I know that you can bear the weight of only one day at a time. Do not worry about tomorrow or get stuck in the past. There is abundant life in my presence today. That is so beautiful. My, my, my. That is so beautiful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. There you go. 
Hallelujah. I'm going to read another devotion today from the book, More of You, God. We use this book every day on our Bible prayer prayer line in the mornings for my dad's church, the Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church. And it's called More of You, God. More of You, God. And I tell you, it's a really wonderful book to have in your library as well. It's a two-year devotional. And it's very impact with a lot of great information. And it's by Jackie Dotson. Jackie Dotson. And you can find this book on Amazon. You can also find it on um, her webpage. It's in this book as well. But if you find it on Facebook, you find little Jackie Dotson. She's, she, you'll find her info on there as well. Amen. So in this book, it says, put it on here, give me one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says, Lord Jesus. Amen. It says, Lord Jesus, today I'm working on having stronger faith. somewhere to distract you okay so it says Lord Jesus today I am working on having stronger faith if I am to pat excuse me, me read it again if I am to please you Lord I know I must have faith of a mustard seed God dear Savior I must walk by faith and not by sight Faith in me, believing before receiving and knowing I will get it. It shall be done. It will be done all in the name of Jesus. Faith is getting out on the water, knowing man says, I cannot walk on the water. But with God, I can do all things because you strengthen me. Therefore, I can walk on the water with your strength and guidance. Faith is closing my ears to what the world is telling me. And listening to what you are saying. Lord, I have an ear for you. My faith only will come with more of you, God. Amen. That is so awesome. And that's the only way we can get through this life and trusting in God is having faith in his word and his ability. Because God is the only one that has the power to bring you through any challenge in your life. To give you the ability to stand on his word and trust him. Only if you have faith to believe. Amen. So you got to believe what God says. You got to believe in his word because it's his word that gives the power to overcome. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and move on tonight in our book. Glory to God. I'm excited because God is good. His mercy endures forever. Last week we began chapter 13 in our book. And it was um, escaping the trap. So in order to escape the trap of the enemy, we got to have an understanding of what the trap is. And allow the Holy Spirit to empower you, to strengthen you, to make it through every obstacle, trial, and test Without the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life, you'll never find yourself escaping the trap of the enemy. Amen. So last week we talked about in order to escape the trap, we have to understand what trap means. And one definition of the, of the words uh, escape or a trap is to break free from contrivement or control. Because that's what the enemy wants to do is entrap you, confine you, get you stuck in a place where you can't come out because he got you entangled. And anything that gets you caught up is, is a, a trap from the enemy to keep you, keep you from knowing what God is doing in your life and how he wants to set you free. You cannot be free if you continue to have a mindset of bondage. Amen. 
So your mind has to be transformed by the word of God. We were talking about last week, it takes effort to stay free from offense. So you have to want to be free from offense. You must, you must want to have a desire to escape the entrapment of your mindset of the enemy. Because one thing the enemy does, he imprisons in our mindset to the things of the past where we cannot overcome or even get past it because we're stuck in a cycle in our mindsets of the same old situations. I don't know if you remember the movie Groundhog Day. On Groundhog Day, Bill Murray played, played this role as a man who repeats the same old cycle every day. And he wanted to be free, but he couldn't be free because of the cycle kept him in emotion of repeating the same old day events over and over and over. And the more he tried to be free from it, the more he found himself entangled in the same old day doing the same thing over and over. And we have people, they wake up in the morning, they have their mind set on doing the same old habits, doing the same addictions, have the same issue, have the same affliction because of their confession. And one thing about the enemy, if I confess with my mouth that I'm still bound in certain issues of life, I will never find myself being free. One thing God revealed to me is that sometimes we have bad habits and we trust in God to break them. And when God brings deliverance, the enemy comes to tempt you and test you to fall right back into the same, same entrapment by baiting you. So the book we're talking about tonight, and we've been in for the last few months, is the bait of Satan. Living free from deadly offense. So the only way to be free from deadly offense of the enemy, you got to identify what is offending the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Because we got to understand, it's not about us. We make it about us because of the way we think with a fleshly mindset. But when the Spirit of God comes inside of you to empower you to overcome, you got to recognize that the enemy has different ideas he put in your mind. And if it's contrary to the Word of God, the Word tells us, 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, to cast down every imagination and every high thought that is all the suffering against the knowledge of God. So you got to take control of your thought life and allow the Holy Spirit to set you free from the, the entrapment of the enemy. Amen? We talked about last night about exercise. That if I don't exercise my spiritual muscles, my, my muscles get weak. And that's the same way in the spiritual aspect, in the natural aspect, I mean, in the same natural natural body. If I don't exercise my body to keep my body functioning and mobile, my muscles get stiff. And when they get stiff, I find myself having a lot of ailments, a lot of sickness, a lot of issues in my health because I'm not maintaining my health by eating the right foods exercising, walking daily, and doing things to maintain a healthy life. I go to chiropractor twice a month for my neck. And one thing he had instructed me, every day is to walk. Because he said walking will loosen up the vertebrae, it will loosen up the muscles, it will cause your body to function better. But if you sit around watching TV for two and three hours, everything begin to freeze up in your body. Intense up. Then you start getting all these elements in your back, your hip, your knees, 
All because you haven't been moving. You've been idle for too long. It's a message in that. When you're idle too long away from the word of God. And the enemy comes to tempt, try and test you. Because you have an idle mindset. He's easy to entice you. To do wrong and turn from the word of God. So you got to pay attention and know what is the entrapment of the enemy. And know what it is the enemy is using against you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Chapter 10 verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. Not Timothy. Amen. So we got to learn how to pay attention. One of the scriptures, <coughs> excuse me, in Acts chapter 16, I mean 24, excuse me, I'm fumbling my words. Acts chapter 24, verse 16. And it reads as follows, say, Herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. So you got to be aware that we can become offensive to God just by our attitudes not being right. So if people cross me wrong and say things I don't like and I become offended if you don't cast down that spirit of offense, your fleshly mindset will begin to plot and plan and devise all type of evil plots to, to overcome the person who offended you. We have to be careful because that's an entrapment of the enemy. Because the enemy knows that if I can keep you blindsided through offenses, I can lead you into the trap where I want to destroy your faith and stop you from walking in your purpose. Amen? Some offenses would be more challenging for those who have been trained. This extra strain may cause a wound or injury after which we will have to exercise spiritually to be free and healed again. But the result would be worth the effort. So you got to take time to exercise your spirit man to avoid injury or being wounded by the entrapment of the enemy. Just like a rodent trap. When you set those baits for, the, for the, those little creatures or rats or mice or whatever whatever type of uh, uh, creature you're trying to capture. A snap trap will snap on their leg or snap on their neck and it'll kill them instantly. If it hit the neck, but if it hit the leg, they, it's not long after that they're going to die because they're not able to move. In the same way when they have a the mechanical traps that's set with a bait inside of it to entice the little creatures that are been violating your home or violating your your out perimeter of your house or got into your attic to chew their way into your house like a squirrel or a raccoon that trap they go inside the trap and they can't come out. Because once they enter into the entry point of the trap, it's designed to let down a door to lock them on the inside where they can't get out. And then you're able to expose that enemy that's been in violating your house or invading your house. Amen. 
So truly, this is going to be a good lesson tonight. So as we was talking about last week, this minister will get offended in church by another person. And because of that, God had to deal with his heart to overcome the offense. And he came to the conclusion when he kept saying that when he wasn't free from the offense and someone questioned him why he seemed to be a certain way, he said, I'm fine. It has affected me and I'm going to call, going on with the call of my life. But the answer was more nothing than pride. And that's where we have to get to a place now so we recognize that whatever incident is that occurred in our lives involving another person in ministry or someone that's close to you or someone that you pass in the grocery store or in the streets or cut you off on the road while driving down the highway or city streets, we're quick to blurt out those unseemly words the word talk about to cuss somebody out because they cut you off or violate you. We see it in church all the time where someone become offended. They are quick to rouse up in anger and allow themselves to retaliate instantly with words they shouldn't say to hurt the person for hurting them. And God is teaching us tonight that we have to be careful just because I become offended does not give me the right to speak whatever the fleshly mind enticed me to speak. Because the words of a walk in the spirit, I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. So you got to be careful how you allow yourself to be entrapped by the enemy and be quick to hear. And slow to speak. And that's an issue we all dealt with one point in our lives. Where we're quick to speak and not hear. So if you mistreat me. I'm going to be quick to retaliate in the same response the way you treated me. For example. Someone borrowed money from you. And they promised to pay you back on a certain day. And they don't do it. So you become offended. Because that person didn't keep their word. Not mindful. How many times. You've done someone else the same way. And God wants to know tonight. That we cannot take vengeance in our own hands. That God would take care of a person. Who owes you anything. To make the slate clean through his own personal conviction. Not your conviction. Not your judgmental mentality. Not your slandering and persecution. But through the power of the Holy Spirit. God will give, give you the power to shut your mouth. And let the Holy Spirit speak for you. To the individuals when the time is right. With the word. That sees it with salt and grace. Amen. So we have to be careful. But we allow to come out of our mouths. That's why the word tells us that we have to crucify this flesh every day. And take up our cross. To follow him. If you want to follow Christ. You got to take up your cross every day to follow him. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I tell you, God is so good. God is so good. Let's go on a little further. It's another point I highlight. I said, this is exactly where the Lord wanted me at the end of my life. And what he's talking about, he said, you go up to here. He said, then came the morning. I will never forget. I was sitting on the back deck of my... Uh, on the deck in my backyard praying. Lord, I am hurt, I ask. No sooner had I had these words left my lips when I heard a shout deep within my spirit. Yes, 
God wanted to make sure I knew I was hurt. That is a very, very wonderful point. Because when you admit to yourself that you're hurt, that's when God can do a work to deliver you. God can set you free from the offense that the enemy has brought upon you to entrap you. Glory to God. I like this. I like this part. This is good. Amen. Glory to God. Okay. So, that's a problem we all have too sometimes. We don't want to admit that we're hurt when people hurt us or we hurt ourselves by making foolish decisions, made wrong choices to invest in certain things and it didn't do any good for me but caused me to lose out. So my money started depreciating, a broken marriage, broken relationships, there's so many different reasons in our lives we get hurt. And we have to recognize that the enemy wants you to get to the place in yourself where you cannot admit that you're hurt. And that's what God wants us to do tonight is come to the place of acknowledgement of knowing that we've been hurt. The fear of man. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Read this here. It says, The fear of man is a snare, but the one who trusts in the Lord is protected. Proverbs 26 24. Amen. And that's where we got to get to place now so we recognize that I cannot make this journey without the Lord on my side. I find myself getting hurt every time. And God wants to be aware of the tactics of the enemy. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So let's go on a little further. It says, this is exactly what the Lord wanted me to at the end of myself. Too often we try to do things. Try to do things do, 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 in the strength of our own souls. Not to cause us to grow spiritually. Instead, we become more susceptible to folly. And we talked about this point last week. That sometimes we get into a place where we entrap ourselves. We fall because we haven't trusted God. We trust our own strength, our own ability. And we hurt ourselves. But God wants you to know tonight that you got to pay attention when the enemy comes to trap you, that you won't find, allow yourself to fall into the pitfalls of despair. Amen? It's easy to do so. you got to let the Lord be in your life to strengthen, to empower you, that you can make it through any challenge and any test that you go through in this life by trusting in his ability and his, his care to take care of you. If you don't trust God to take care of you, you don't always find, find yourself it. trying to fix things your own way. Amen. So, the first step to healing and freedom is recognize your hurt. And that's what you got to understand. I got to recognize. Secondly, you got to have forgiveness. And allow the Lord to release you from everything a person has done to you or you've done to yourself, don't allow yourself to be stuck in condemnation. Amen? And when you allow the Spirit of God to do that, you find yourself being free from the entrapment of the enemy. What about relapses? This is going to be a good one here. What about relapses? So a few months went by. Occasionally I had fight off Find out some of the same thoughts I had before I forgave. A person hurt in the same manner might bring their complaint to me, or perhaps I will see a man or hear his name. I reject these thoughts as soon as I notice them and cast them down. So, so what he's saying here 
is that the same incidents that he went through and occurrences he endured, people would come to him with the same problems. And he felt, felt himself trying to rise up in the same way of the same attitude to do things to hurt somebody. So we got to be careful what God is trying to tell you to do in your own in your own life today because you can't make it on your own without God. It's very vital to allow the Spirit of God to work through you as an agent of righteousness. Amen. So we got to be an agent of righteousness and not allow ourselves to be victimized through other people and their stories of how they've been offended and then you build up resentment towards the person who hurt them. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 what we've been talking about. This was my exercise of striving to stay free. Finally asked the Lord how to keep these thoughts from drawing me back into unforgiveness. I knew he desired a higher level of freedom for me. And I did not want to live the rest of my life holding offense at arm's length. The Lord instructed me to pray for the man who had hurt me and reminded me of his word. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. Amen. Then he goes on and says, So I prayed. At first it was in dry, monotone voice, without a hint of passion. Out of obligation, I would add, Lord, bless him. Give him a good day. Help him all that he does in Jesus' name. Amen. This continued for a few weeks. I seem to be getting nowhere. Then one morning, the Lord impressed Psalm 35 upon me. And I had no idea what Psalm 35. So I turned to it and began to read. When I got halfway, I saw my situation. Fierce witnesses rise up. They ask me things that I do not know. They reward me evil for good. To the sorrow of my soul. I could identify with David. In my opinion, both men and some of his associates have rewarded me evil for good. My soul was definitely in sorrow. God was using this psalm to point out my battle for those last few years. One passage made me jump almost high enough to hit the ceiling. Says, but as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled myself with fasting, and my prayer would return to my own heart. I paced about as though he were my friends or brother. I bowed down heavily as one who mourns for his mother. Psalm 35. Verse 13 and 14. David said that these men were trying to destroy him. They attacked him with evil when they had, they had done nothing to merit. Then came my answer. But as for me, David's response was not based on the action of others determined to do what was right. He prayed for them and that they were his close brothers or as one grieving for the loss of a mother. God was showing me how to pray for this man. Pray the very thing for him that you want me to do for you. Now my prayers, check this out. This is good. Because now after reading Psalm 35, he says, now my prayers change. It was no longer bless him, God bless him, and give him a good day. 
it became infused with life. I pray, Lord, reveal yourself to him in a greater way. Bless him with your presence. Let him know you more intimately. May he be pleasing to you and bring honor to your name. I pray what I wanted God to do in my own life. That is so powerful. My God, my God, that is so powerful. I hope you're paying attention. This was good. This is good. Hallelujah. Within a month of praying passionately for him, I cried with a loud voice. I bless you. I love you in the name of Jesus. It was a cry from deep within my spirit. I had gone from praying for him for my sake to pray for him for his sake. And I believe the healing was totally complete. That is so awesome. That is so awesome. You know, that, that's one thing about God. When we get out of ourselves and let the Holy Spirit have his way in us, God will begin to change everything about you to empower you to walk into your healing. You cannot be healed if you're going to continue to have the attitude that the enemy gives you to resist and rebel against truth and righteousness. My God, my God. That is so awesome. So we learn how to submit to the voice of the Holy Spirit. God will change your mindset every time. And all you're doing, looking for a surrendered person who will just yield to his lordship and his authority that he can have his way in our lives. Amen. Healing and confrontation. A few weeks passed and I saw him again. An uncomfortable sensation lingered in my heart. I still felt, I still fought, my God, and so I still fought the urge to be critical. And that's something. We do that all the time. We don't listen to the voice of the Lord. We listen to ourselves. We find ourselves holding on to unresentment. And he said, you need to go to him, John. My wife encouraged me. No, I don't, I assured her. I am healed now, but I sensed that the Holy Spirit did not bear witness what I had just said. So I asked the Lord if I needed to go to him. And guess what? I made an appointment with the man and brought him a gift. And I humbled myself, confessed my wrong attitude, and asked for forgiveness. We were reconciled and forgiveness and healing flowed into my heart. I walked out of his office healed and strengthened. I no longer had to fight the pain, nor was I critical of him. Our relationship had been strong since then, and we have never had other problems. In fact, we were very supportive of each other. When I first met the man, I told Lisa he could do no wrong in my eyes. I saw no faults in him. I loved him because I thought he was perfect. My God, my God, this is so good. Amen. Hope this is helping you tonight. He said, but, but when I was hurt, it was hard to love him. It took a bit of faith that I had. Now, that have gone through this restoration process and have been healed. I love him with the same intensity as when I first met him in spite of any faults. It is a mature love. That is so amazing. Oh my God, that's amazing. That is amazing. 
And you know one thing about God, when we are sincere about reconciling with other people, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you. He will encourage you. He will enrich you. He will empower you to let you know that, hey, if you just surrender, I got this. You ain't got to keep fighting individuals. You got to keep fighting other people. You just rest in the promises of my word. Then it goes on in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. And above all things, have fervent love. For one another. For love will cover a multitude of faults or sins. So what he's talking about, above everything else that you do, you gotta have that God kind of love, that unshakable love, fervent, unshakable. That kind of love that God demonstrated to us, you and I, when he rose from the dead, that we can receive new life in his presence. It is easy to love those who can do no wrong in our eyes. That's honeymoon love. It is, it is another thing to love someone when we can see their faults, especially when we've been Victims of them. The love of God was maturing me. And strengthening my heart. Since then similar cases have come up. But it was taking no time at all to release the offense. The reason my heart exercised to stay free from offense. Several months went by from the time God spoke to me in the backyard until I walked out of the man's office hill. That was a training period in which my heart was exercised and strengthened. During those months, I seemed, it seemed times to be getting nowhere. In fact, I wondered, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, I wondered. They tripping. It says, during those months, it seemed at times to be getting nowhere. In fact, I wondered if we had grown worse. But I was on the sure road to recovery. The Spirit of the Lord led me at a pace I could handle. It was part of my cheering process. And I would not trade that experience. And I'm thankful for the growth it brought back to my life. Amen. Next week we're going to talk about maturing through hardship. So we're going to end at this point right here. But I want to encourage you. If you have any offense from anybody. You got to get to a place in yourself to let go of it. And let the Lord have his way in your life. Amen. Because if you don't. One thing about the enemy, he's going to always pop some up in your mind to stop you in your track, to keep you in bondage. God told the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 23, verse 33, he said, they shall not live in the land because they will make you sin against me. For you, for if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. And this is when God prompted the children of Israel not to allow themselves to allow other inhabitants from other nations, idol worshipers, to, to join, co-mingle co co with them. That's what I'm looking for. Co-mingle with them in the promised land. Because he said they will cause them to sin against him. And that's what God is talking about. Then Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 16. So you shall consume all the people whom the Lord your God will deliver to you. Your eyes should not pity them, nor should you serve their gods, for that will be a snare to you. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 16. And that's one thing God wants to be aware of. That you got to pay attention. There are certain people you cannot be around because they, they are a snare to you. They will stain you. They will mess you up. They will pervert you. They will corrupt you. They'll lead you astray. 
So you have to be careful of the life that you live before people allow the Holy Spirit to fill you up with the promise of His Word every day that you can live free from the entrapment, the baits, and the snare of the enemy. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. So anyone have any questions or comments? Amen. If, you, if this is good to you, we'll set up those hearts on here tonight. Amen. I see there's only a few people on tonight, but that's okay. Hopefully this will help other people who will come on later on to, re to listen to the show. Amen. So, but I um, pray that you be encouraged tonight. Share this with someone else, this video. That will help encourage them and enrich their spirits to grow and mature in their Christian walk with the Lord. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this lesson tonight. We pray that it encourages, enriches, and empowers your people, God, to live a freer, a freer and a fruitful life in the presence of the Lord. That you will be glorified, cleanse our minds and our hearts from all unrighteousness. And, Father, we thank you for the spirit of restoration that you reconcile us back to yourself through the blood of the Lamb and save us from ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we do each week, I want to encourage you who don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior. The words are for God so loved the world. We just celebrated Easter on Sunday or Resurrection Sunday. World called the Easter, we call the resurrection. Because we believe in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Romans 10 and 10, it said that if thou confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That if and then he said, For the man believes in the righteousness of the heart. Man believes unto righteousness. I said that wrong. For the mouth confession is made with the heart. Man believes unto righteousness. That's the correct way of saying that. So I pray that you be enriched tonight. If you don't know Jesus, give your life to him. Because he came to die and to live for you and me that we may have new life. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Amen. You can receive this new life tonight by praying this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge I am a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Knowing and unknowingly. And cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb. And come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you welcome to the family of God. The whole host of heaven is rejoicing over one sinner that made a righteous choice to give their lives over to the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. I have one announcement. Next week, we're going to plan to start Google Meet. Google Meet. We're going to plan to start Google Meet. And Google Meet is another platform where we'll be able to actually converse with each other. So I can see you, you can see me, or you can turn off your camera and still be able to communicate. And we still can hear each other. And I'll be able to send out a link. So if you have Gmail, if you have a Gmail account, you have to download Google Meet on your phone or, or go into your Gmail on your computer. When you go into your Gmail account on your computer, you're going to see the mail, chat, spaces, and meet located on the left side of the screen. And when you click on meet, it's going to, you're going to click on join with meeting. I mean, join with a code, correction, join with a code. 
and I'll send out the code next week for that. And you'll be able to actually come on here. And I'll still be streaming from Facebook as well. And be doing the Google Meet at the same time. So we just spread the news, invite others to come on. And if you want to sow a seed into the ministry, there's a link attached to the Facebook Live where you can actually sow a seed into the ministry. I'm not begging, not pleading for nobody to give. You give according to God, put in your heart to give. If you choose to give, praise God. If you don't, God bless you anyway. Amen. And we're going to continue to trust God for the increase in favor on everything he has us to do for the kingdom of God. And every seed sown, it goes for the building of the project for our church redeemed faith fellowship here in Milwaukee. So I pray the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face upon you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good night. Have a good night, everybody.